QuickBooks Online 2022 Sales Tax and Bank Feeds. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our bank feed practice file. We set up with a 30 day free trial, holding down control, scrolling up a bit to get to the 125% currently in the home page, otherwise known as the Get Things Done page. In the business view as compared to the accounting view, changing to the accounting view is something you can do by going to the cog up top, switch to accountant view down below. We will be toggling back and forth between the two views either here or by jumping to the sample company file currently in the accounting view. Going to open up a couple tabs to put reports in by right clicking up the tab on top, duplicating it back to the tab to the left, right clicking again and duplicating it again. As that is thinking, let's see where the reports are located over here in the accounting view, which is on the left hand side under the reports. Going back on over to the sample company to look at, this is the bank feed practice file, in other words, to look at the second tab to find the reports which are located in the business view, which are going to be under the reports, closing the hamburger, open up the balance sheet, one of the major financial statement reports, the ranges, they are changing from 010121 to 123121 and run. And then we're going to go to the tab to the right. We're going to go into the business overview again. Reports, closing the hand boogie, going down to the profit and loss, the other major financial statement report, the P&L, the income statement. In other words, 010121 to 123121 for the range and run. There we have those two. We're going to go back then to the first tab to take a look at where the bank feeds are at in the business view. They're in the bookkeeping area down below. They're in the transactions up top in the banking. If you happen to be in the accounting view, then they would be under the banking on the left hand side banking transactions then up top. So I'm going to close up the hamburger. These are the bank feeds that we pulled in. This is what we would be seeing uh, if we were dealing with the bank feeds and we're going to look at the sales tax transactions related to them. So this is what would actually have cleared the bank They're in bank feed limbo. We'd have to add them from here to go into our creation of the financial statements. Now the sales tax, and I'm going to look at this from the perspective of the United States. Uh, you might have similar taxes that you can have similar ways to deal with. There's no really new tax under the sun. They've all been done. It's just which one is your particular government going to be imposing on you. And then you can try to see how you're going to fit that into, in essence, your accounting system. So the problem with the sales tax is that it's going to kind of force us in essence to deviate from the cash basis system that we would like to have because we're going to have to collect the sales tax and usually increase a payable account. So we're going to think about this from our standpoint as we have seen in the past. This is going to be our float chart here. This is from the desktop version, but just getting an idea of how things are flowing through the system. We're trying to think of a system first off where we can be dependent as much as possible on the bank feeds and then think about how we're going to deviate from that when necessary to go on an accrual basis or to deal with any tax regulations and so on and so forth. So the sales tax, the problem with the sales tax is that the system in order to calculate the sales tax the way QuickBooks wants to do so, you have to use the, the sales forms, which would be the invoice or the create sales receipts. In other words, we would like to be on a cash basis system or be dependent on the bank. And if the easiest way to do that would be to wait till everything clears the bank as a deposit form in the bank feeds and then record the sale at the point in time that it clears the bank. But if I do that, then I'm not recording the sales tax as they like to be recorded within the system or how the system is designed to record the sales tax because it should be recorded at the point of sale with the create sales receipt and uh, the create or the create invoice type of form. So there's, there's first, let's think about how it's naturally done within QuickBooks and then how the bank feeds will fit into that process. And then we'll kind of think about how we can make it more of a cash basis system, possibly deviating from using these forms, still use the deposit form, but be able to basically calculate our sales tax. So let's first think about how sales tax works in, in QuickBooks if we did the full service system. 
To do that, I'm going to duplicate this tab up top again, right click on the tab up top, duplicate again. I'm going to turn on the sales tax fairly quickly because I don't want to focus too much time on just processing the sales tax, but I just want to give an example of it. When you think about turning on sales tax, uh, there's, there's three things you need to think about. One is just turning on the tax, which is often the most difficult. You need to know who's going to be the, the entity taxing you in the United States. That's more difficult than some other taxes because it's a state and local tax as opposed to a federal tax. And therefore, that can be a little bit confusing, especially if you're dealing with multiple tax agencies charging sales tax or you're dealing uh, with multiple states that you make sales in. So you want to be careful with that. And then two, once you've turned it on, you need to look at the items to determine which items are taxable. And then three, probably the least important, is that you might have some customers that are exempt from the taxes and you wanna make sure that if they're exempt, you record that as you enter the sales tax for those particular customers because it'll be a deviation from the standard, which is to be a taxable kind of entity. Okay, so the sales tax, let's first think about turning on the taxes. So if I went to the taxes tab, on the left hand side then we've got our taxes up top this is in the business view if you were in the accounting view you've got your taxes tab on the left hand side here as well and then i'm up in the sales tax i'm going to close this out it says automatically calculate taxes create invoices or receipts we calculate the sales tax and so on and so forth let's use the automatic sales tax setup i'm going to go through this quite quickly in order to do so you're going to need an address here. I'm going to use California, but I'm going to try to make it as generic as possible because, you know, the same kind of idea will apply anywhere, depend, but the tax rates will be different and so on. So I'm going to choose an address. We need the address. I'm going to choose uh, Beverly Hills 90210. This is like a $40 million house I'm thinking about buying. Yeah, just kidding. <laughs> but if you're in the market for it, there, there it is. But in any case, that's going to be the location. We need some kind of location so it can... Uh, help us to calculate the sales tax for that location and then we're going to say next tell us more about your taxes we calculate sales tax based on what you sell and where you sell it if you sell it multiple locations we calculate the correct sales tax for each one that's one of the complications with the sales tax is that you have multiple locations it could be different i'm going to make it as easy as possible here for our example do you need to collect sales taxes outside of california i'm going to say no so we'll just say just California sales tax. And so then we're going to say next on that one. Automatic sales tax is all set. So we have set it up. So now I can create an invoice. I'm going to close this out now. I'm going to close this out. It looks like it has been set up for us. So here's the information that they gave for us with regards to the sales tax. Now the thing with the sales tax you got to be aware of is that the tax is theoretically not on you the business owner it's going to be on the the person who is making the purchase the purchase or you're just being forced to be the collection agency by whoever the tax agency is so the idea then is that you're going to up your price by whatever the sales tax is collecting it from the customer imposing the tax on the customer then you're going to take that money and you're going to pay it to the government on behalf in essence of the customer is generally the idea that means when we make sales we're going to be collecting the sales tax from the customers increasing generally a liability account that we will then have to pay so we're going to we're going to have to pay it at some future point the question then is well how often uh, is the agency requiring you to pay it that may differ from state to state and by how much sales tax you are collecting in other words if you have a substantial amount of sales the government probably wants to get paid sooner after you make the sale. If you have not that many sales, then they may have a less, less of a time frame on which you need to pay the sales tax. So we've got monthly, quarterly, or yearly. I'm just going to say monthly here for the sales tax. And this is the schedule for this current location. It could be different by, by where you are at. So I'm just going to say, okay, let's save that. And so sales tax is set up. So there we have it there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna open up the hamburger. Number two, what you need to think about are what you are selling. So in the business view, we got the get paid and the pay area. And we're gonna go into the products and services. If you were in the business view, it would be under the sales area and then the product and services up top. So now we need to set up what we are selling. Now in the United States office, oftentimes it's gonna be like an inventory type of item. 
which is one which you're gonna be charging sales tax for. We'll talk about tracking inventory and whatnot. We talked about a little bit in the past. We'll think about that more in the future. I'm not gonna get into the inventory tracking. I'm just gonna have an item that is subject to sales tax. So what I'm gonna do is add an item. These are the things that are gonna show up on the invoices and the sales receipts. It's not gonna be inventory that would be tracking inventory, but a non-inventory, uh, which means I would like to have it recognize it possibly as a physical thing, possibly subject to sales tax, but I'm not gonna track it with a perpetual inventory system. So I'm gonna say item sales tax. So it's just gonna be an item subject to sales tax is what I'm trying to say there. And then description, I'm gonna have the same thing. The sales price, I'm gonna say we sell it for $500. The income account, I'm gonna say is uh, not an, a service item. Yeah, we'll keep it there. We'll keep it at service item. So I'll keep it there. And then the sales tax, is it taxable? So I'm gonna edit the sales tax and go into it. Now you could choose the category and this will be useful to basically make sure you get the correct sales tax uh, calculation for it. So that'll get into detail in the weeds here. QuickBooks trying to help you out to make sure that you're properly applying the sales tax to what you're selling. But I'm gonna go down here and just say that it is a taxable item with the standard rate. So standard tax should be applied to it. And then I purchase information. I'm not gonna have anything there. We don't have any purchase inside. I'm not gonna be talking about inventory information for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it and close it. So now we have it set up. So the sales tax item is there. Now the third thing that you would wanna think about is to see if any customers would be exempt from that. In other words, sales tax is on. Anybody that purchases this item is subject to sales tax and it will be calculated when you make an invoice or sales receipt generally, unless you have a customer which you said is exempt from sales tax for whatever reason, like they're the government or something like that. So they don't need to pay sales tax. So we could then go, if I went into the customers area, get paid and paid area and the customer area. And if I was to add a customer that was exempt from sales tax, I can then, for example, go into, let's say customer one here, and I can edit that information, and I can go into my tax info and say this customer is tax exempt. When I say tax exempt, I mean exempt from sales tax. Okay, so that's the general idea. So now sales tax is set up. I, I can't really wait till something clears the bank though to calculate the sales tax. I gotta create an invoice or sales receipt so it will properly calculate the sales tax and tax the customer if I'm using it in the way that QuickBooks wants us to use it. So I'm gonna hit the hamburger up top and let's, for example, create an invoice. An invoice would be a non-cash thing, it would be an accrual type of thing, increasing, say, accounts receivable. Let's make a customer, let's make a customer, let's just call it generic customer two. Customer, add customer info. Hold on a second. Customer two. That's the one I want. Customer two, we're gonna add it. Quick add, I'm not gonna add an email just for the example purposes here is what we're doing this for. And we'll say this happened on, let's say, let's say 01, uh, 0120, 0120, 21. Okay. And then we're gonna select our item down here that we just, we just created. And this is us using the items which we're not using when we just record sales with a deposit. This is the thing we're missing or one of them when we try to just be dependent on the bank feeds. So I'm gonna say this is going to be the sales tax item. So there it is, 500, it's subject to sales tax. And so it's gonna calculate the sales tax on it down below based on our location. Now I'm gonna change this a little bit just so I can make it a generic problem. I'm gonna change it to a straight 5% for generic problem purposes. So I'm gonna click on this and here it is calculating the sales tax. I'm gonna override it and say, I just want you to use a generic five so I can kind of standardize it and not make it particular to California is my thought process here. I'm gonna hit the drop down and say other reason because I said so QuickBooks, just do it. Just do what I say. Dang, stop asking me. Just collecting my entire life. They know my entire life over here, QuickBooks does. Anyways, so there we have it. And so what's this going to do now? This is going to be an invoice. It's gonna increase the accounts receivable. 
by the full amount, including the sales tax, the 525, because we're going to charge the customer the sales tax. The other side's going to go to revenue, but only for the 500, the difference going to the sales tax payable, a liability account, which means we're deviating from a cash basis method. That's one area that we're deviating. And then that's going to be the, that's going to be the transaction inventory not affected by this particular transaction because we're not tracking inventory. We'll talk about that later. But note also that you could think of this as why you might say, well, why don't they increase the revenue account by 525 and the accounts receivable by 525? And then when I pay the sales tax, it should be recorded as an expense of $25 netting out to 500, but having revenue at 525 expense 25, the difference between the two 500. The reason we don't do that or one reason is that we're thinking of this 25 not as revenue to us. It doesn't hit the income statement. We're just the tax collector. We're the ones forced to be the tax collector. So when I collect the 525, I only charge the 500 in theory. I say in theory because from an economic standpoint, who is the tax really being imposed on? It's hard to say. But in any case, we'll, in theory, we only got the 500. And the difference of the 25 is what we collected on the customer, charging the customer by the tax collector on the tax collector's behalf, and then we've got to pay it to the government. So that means the revenue nor the expense is going to hit the income statement with regards to the sales tax. Let's save it and close it and check it out. So we'll save it and close it and say, all right, well, then if I go back on over to my balance sheet, is that what happened? Let's run it, hold down control. And then if I scroll down, I'm going to say accounts receivable went up by the 525. I'm sorry, not by the by the 525. There it is by the full amount. If I scroll back up the revenue on the tab to the right, if I run that again, revenue went up by and I just put it in the service revenue of 500 and then the difference between the two is back on the balance sheet which is the liability account which they put under the name of the in, of who we're paying California Department of Tax or whatever you could just call it sales tax payable this is actually the vendor but that's the 25 now in the future we're going to have to pay off that 25 let's say at the end of the month so we can imagine that we collect all the sales tax for January, increase in the payable. And then in February, we pay off the sales tax, decreasing this account and decreasing the cash account. So that means in to how does the bank feed fit into the system? Well, I have to use an invoice or a sales receipt in order to record the sales tax. You can see here, I need the invoice or the sales receipt because those are the two forms to record the sales tax if I'm doing the full process. So in other words, I could also say, well, what if I'm on a cash basis system and I'm at like, I could say, well, then when I make the sale, I would generally use a sales receipt as opposed to the deposit, which again, the deposit would be the easiest thing to do if I could just be reliant on the bank, wait till it clears the bank. But I'm kind of forced to use the sales receipt if I want to do the full process. Let's take a look at that real quick just to see the difference. Let's say this is customer three, customer three. Can't you get more inventive with the customers? Customer three, that's lame. Whatever, customer three. And this is gonna be 125.21. And then we can put this into the checking account or we might use basically a payment to be deposited, which is a clearing account. And so I'll use that for now because that's oftentimes what you would do in this kind of system. I'll talk about that in a second but we can make the same item down here, which would be then the sales tax item. So notice I'm using the service items, tax is being calculated. I can then see the same calculation down below. I'm gonna adjust the tax for the generic 5% for our practice problem purposes instead of the tax for California by overriding it, generic 5%. Why? Because QuickBooks, because stop asking me questions, just, ah, anyways. So what's this going to do? It's going to increase some kind of cash account because we're assuming we got paid at the same time. I'm going to put it into a clearing account, which used to be called undeposited funds, now called payment to deposit so that I can match multiple deposits together and then put them into the bank. We'll talk about that in a second. And then the other side is going to go to the uh, sales, but only by the 500. 
and then the difference is going to increase the sales tax again by the 25 to 25 dollars so this would be a cash basis system because i'm i can say that i'm getting paid at this point in time but i'm not using a deposit to do it which would be the easiest thing on the bank feeds so let's go ahead and save that if i save that save and send i'm not sending it i'm just saving save and close it i don't want to send it quickbooks and then i'm going to go to the tab to the right What's that gonna do? If I scroll back up top, run the report, freshening it up. So that didn't go into the receivable. I didn't put it into the checking account either. We put it into this clearing account, which is called payments to deposit, used to be called undeposited funds. There's the 525. The other side's going into the revenue account. If I go to the income statement and run it again, We've got the revenue account is now at five, is 1,000, 500 plus the 500 for the two things that we did, invoice and the sales receipt. The difference is going back to the balance sheet for the sales tax payable, the sales tax payable that we owe down here, which is under the California Department of blah, 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 25 and 25 adding up to the 50. Okay, so the, in order to match this up to the bank feeds then, we could, if I go back to my flow chart, let's go to the flow chart. We've entered an invoice and a sales receipt. So when we enter the invoice, it's possible we could wait till something clears the bank and match it up to the invoice, or we can take the invoice and receive the payment from the customer, putting it into undeposited funds or that other clearing account, whatever it's called, and then wait till it clears the bank, matching the deposit to the receive payment, or we can deposit this into the actual deposit on our end and then match the bank feed to the deposit. We'll talk more about those three steps a little bit later, but, or if I created the sales receipt, I could take the bank feed as it clears the bank and match it up to the, the sales receipt, in essence, making the deposit, or I could take this sales receipt and deposit it and then match the bank feed up to the deposit. We'll talk more about that later, uh, but, those three steps and how the bank feeds can fit into those steps or however many steps that was. Let's go ahead and, and deposit it through the full system as we normally would. And then we'll talk about how we can maybe set up the sales tax so that we can be dependent on the deposit instead of creating an invoice or the sales receipt. Is there any workaround where I can basically be a cash basis system and not have to use these two forms in other words. So if I go back on over, normally if I, if I go to the second tab here, We'd have to say we would receive the payment now. Let's go. If I had the invoice, then I would receive the payment. So I'd receive the payment from customer. Customer number two is saying we're saying they're going to pay us now. Let's say it happened on the 26th. I won't put a method. I'll just keep it there. And it's going to go into, I'm going to put this into the payment to deposit item here. Payment to deposit, which is the clearing account again used to be called undeposited funds. And then I'm gonna check off the invoice, assuming that they paid us the 525. This decreases accounts receivable, puts it into the clearing account of undeposited funds. I'm gonna save and close that. And then if I go to my, my balance sheet and run it, the accounts receivable account went back down. If I drill down on the accounts receivable account, then I see the 525 went back down, going back up. Then the other side did not go into the checking account yet, but rather went into the undeposited funds or now known as payments to deposit, which has this 1,050 in it. So if I go into that item, we've got the 1,050 in it from the payment that we received and the sales receipt. Then we can take that amount and deposit it into the bank. So we could do that by then going to the tab to the right. Now notice that if I have to combine, if I have to combine these two together and deposit them as one lump sum, then I, I kind of would, might want to use this system because then when they clear the bank, I'll see it deposit as that one lump sum. So I'm going to combine those together. Let's see what that looks like. If I go to the first tab and I hit the plus button, I'm not using the bank feeds. I'm just going to make the deposit with the bank deposit and then match it out to the bank feeds. So I'd have to actually make the deposit here. I'm going to combine these two together as if we're going to deposit them at one time. This is going to be going into, let's make this as 127, the checking account. This goes into our checking account. The other side 
is going to decrease the undeposited funds when it goes into the checking account. It's not going to do so with two separate transactions, but with one, 1050 We're expecting that that's what's going to clear the bank, which we will see in the bank feeds. And so after we record this, the bank feeds will match out. We're going to use the bank feeds to double check, help out with the reconciliation, tying out to the 1050 So I'll save and close that and save and close that. And I go back to the first tab. Finally, we hit the checking account with this amount. Checking account now would have that 1050 in it. 1050 that we did on, I don't, I don't know when we did that. There it is. There it is. And then we would have to wait till that clears the bank on the deposits from the bank feeds and match it out, helping us out with the bank reconciliation. So in that case, the, the bank feeds wouldn't be, we wouldn't be reliant on the bank feeds. Now you might say, okay, well, what if, how can I do this without, without basically using these two forms? I just want to, I just want to make sales. I just want to make sales, including the sales tax, pay my sales tax obligation, but then just wait till everything clears the bank and just record everything that clears the bank as revenue. Well, you could say, okay, that just means maybe I'll just increase the sales tax into my calculation. So I'll say, so let's pull up, let's pull out a trusty Excel worksheet. You'd have to think on the front end, you'd have to say, okay, what am I selling my stuff for and include the sales tax in the sales price? So you'd say, okay, let's format this sales. And let's say that this is going to be, I'm going to make this currency bracketed and take off the decimals. So that means if I sold something for $500, just using 500 as a generic, so sales was 500, I'm gonna make the whole thing bold so it might be easier to see. If sales was 500 and the sales tax rate is 0.05 or 5%, I'm gonna make that a percent number group, percentifying it and underline it. That means that the sales tax on the sale is going to be equal to the 500 times the 5%. So that means that the amount that we charge to the customer, customer, because I spelled it wrong. I'm going to leave it like that. I hope it doesn't bother anybody too much. Would be then equal to the 500 plus the 25. So we would be charging the, the customer 525 than when we, when we charge it. So what we'd want to do is when we make the sale actually include the 525 in the sales price. So you can also think about it this way. We could say, well, if the sales was 500 and I'm going to say sales tax, sales plus sales tax rate, which would be equal to 100% plus the 0.05 making that a percent number group, percentifying it, underlining it 105%. So the amount we charge to the customer, 500 times 105. So you're gonna create your basically rate and then you're just gonna say, well, what do I have to charge if I include the sales tax and put that in place at the 525? And then every time you make a sale, you can wait till it clears the bank and record it then into your system as it clears the bank and that would be, of course, an increase to the checking account would increase every time you make the sale and it clears the bank. And, and then the other side would be going to sales, would be going to sales here. Now, that would mean that you've over, you've, you've increased sales by too much. You increased it by the 25% because really you only charged 500 on it and the rest was the sales tax. So then you're going to have to adjust that periodically. So in other words, if, for example, for the month of January, you made sales of, of let's say, that 1000, 1060 So if sales were at the 1060 then the question is, how much of that was sales tax that you're going to have to decrease the sales pie in order to pay the sales tax? So one way to write that, you might say, okay, well, the sale, let's say the sales is basically the unknown up top. And then I said that the, this is the rate plus the sales tax. And I know that that is 1.05. So we'll make that a percent and underline it. And so, and then I know that the charge to the customers, which is all I'm assuming taxable was the 1,060. 
So then I need to back in then to what the sales amount was. So I've got something that would look like X times the one uh one oh five percent or let's make it not a percent one point oh five is going to be equal to the one thousand sixty and I can solve then for x so that means then if I go back up top this is going to be equal to this divided by this and I can double check my number this way and say if, if it was this times this there there it would be so so then so then i can go back in and say if i had sales if my sales i charged people sales of and i had 1060 the amount that was the sales tax that i'm going to have to decrease sales by periodically meaning i'm going to write a check to the government decreasing my checking account by the sales tax which is going to be the difference between these two, 1,060 minus that $50 is gonna be what we're charging the sales tax to and we're gonna decrease our revenue by the $50 to get it down to the 1,010. So the general idea would be then if I wanna be on a cash basis and just wait till everything clears the bank and just use the deposit form to record the sales but I'm subject to sales tax then I can try to put the sales tax into the sales price. When I make the sale, then I'll be overstating my sales line by the sales tax. And then I'll take my total at the end of the period in sales, which is including sales tax, is too high by the sales tax. And I'll back out the sales tax portion, writing a check, lowering or making a payment, lowering then the checking account by the amount of the sales tax the other side then going to sales which is unusual because you're decreasing sales but that's because you overstated sales before it's not going into sales tax expense you might think because really the sales tax uh, is something that shouldn't be on the income statement at all we just overstated the sales so we're decreasing the sales back down to what they should be so that's a method and that you can basically then be dependent on the bank feeds and you could just basically wait till the sales clear the bank you can record everything that is a deposit as sales and then figure out what your sales tax portion should be periodically write the check for that and the other side and, and then when it clears the bank when you see that transaction clear the bank you would be decreasing the checking account and the other side would be decreasing sales bringing sales back down to the appropriate uh, the appropriate level so that's one method you might try to put in place if again if you want to be dependent on just the bank feeds. So those are a few methods for the sales tax.